So today I'm going to talk about two modules that uh, I've grouped together as what I call rate of change modifiers. They're the CV filter and the slew limiter. They do very similar things, but there are some important distinctions to keep in mind when using them. And the most common application for either one of them uh, is keyboard portamento. And I think that's a good way to hear what they do and what I mean by a rate of change modifier. So what I have here is a little keyboard module and it's connected to the synth voice I have on page two uh, with the, the gate going to the VCA and the note out going directly to the oscillator. And if I press this key I get a C2. If I press this key, I get a C6, four octaves higher. Now, those notes just go from here to here, here to here. And we'll hear something different when we disconnect our keyboard directly from the oscillator and instead connect it to the CV filter. Now the CV filter is then going back to the oscillator. I'm not going to show that connection, but you place this in between the two and it modifies uh, the, the change that it sees. So we have familiar. Right, so the notes glide uh, from one to the other. Now I'm going to disconnect this and we'll hear the slew limiter. So again, this is connected to the oscillator. As you can hear, they do very similar things. Um, you know, both of them cause the notes not to jump from one point to the other, but to, to move uh, smoothly or, or along a line uh, between two points. So this is great, you know, for instance, if you want to have... Um, cat hair. If you want to have a, uh, this is great if you want to have like a stomp box, a, a stomp switch um, fade in an effect. You know, you press the stomp switch and slowly uh, the mix of a, of a delay changes, right? Not just it goes on and off, but, but it fades in, uh, you know, and, and for that application, either of these are, are the modules you would want to look at. Um, there are some important differences, though, and I'm going to talk about those now. So what I have here is a graph that shows CV on one side and time on the other. If we were to look at how the slew limiter would travel from uh, 0 to 1, it would look like this, uh, depending on our rate of change. But let's assume this is our rate of change. The slew limiter follows a linear path, which means a straight line. Uh, the CV filter, on the other hand, has a logarithmic curve. So it would look like this, or maybe even more like this. Um, so it's going to, to rise faster uh, at the start, and then slowly as it approaches one, uh, the, the rate that it changes will become slower. Uh, and the same when it drops from one to zero, it'll have a curve like that. Whereas, you know, with the <coughs> slew limiter, 
it would again be a straight line. Um, now that's one of the distinctions, is this curve. The other distinction is when you look at how they uh, calculate their rate of change. So let's say instead of traveling from, from 1 to 0, we want to travel from 1 to 0.2. For the slew limiter, what it does is imagine an idealized line that travels to one. Um, and based on the, the change in value it sees, it will rise to that point in the amount of time that it would take to travel to one as a, as a percentage of that. Um, the CV filter functions differently. Instead of using this angle as its uh, point of reference, it uses time. And we see this reflected in the controls. The slew limiter's uh, value is called rate. The CV filter is called time constant. And what that means is in the, with the slew limiter, if we, we travel to point 2 instead of 1, it's going to end up taking about uh, 20% of the time it would take to travel to 1, uh, or to rise to 1. With the CV filter, we get a curve that looks like this, and finally arrived at point 2 in the same amount of time it would take to arrive at 1. Um, and so, one of the, the major differences, then, uh, is that the, the CV filter's rate of change will, the, the speed at which it changes will remain constant, but that also means that uh, differences will be perceived as taking longer, I think, you know. Um, and I wanted to demonstrate this visually. We have the outputs of the two, and what I've done is I've patched in I patched a stomp switch uh, into the inputs, and it's just going to go from 0 to 1. So if we look at the CV filter, we can see that logarithmic curve. Let's wait for the slew limiter to get back to 0. We do the slew limiter, we see the linear line, and they take about the same amount of time to reach 1. But I've also patched the stomp switch into this value module and attenuated its output to 20%, so it shows 0.2. I'm going to disconnect these, then connect that value module to the inputs. Let's watch the, the slew limiter first. We're only rising to point 0.2 this time. Boop, we're there, right? Takes a lot less time and now we're at a, a steady uh, level. If we look at the CV filter, I don't know if you can see this, but there's still little lines showing up there. Uh, that demonstrate that it was still rising some, much longer than the slew limiter. So again, it'll it'll rise to almost two very quickly, but then to actually reach two, it'll take the point two. It'll take the same amount of time as it would take to reach one. Um, so along with the curve, uh, this is something you want to keep in mind when you use these modules. The final thing I wanted to talk about was using the CV filter for wave shaping, for modulation shaping. Um, the CV filter uh, can function as a, I'm going to forget the names of these, just look them up, integrator and something else. But essentially what it does is it filters 
CV waves the way uh, an audio filter might filter <coughs> audio waves. Um, and we can see this most pronounced in the, the square wave. So what I have going into the CV filter is a square wave LFO. Um, it's going from negative one to one. You can see it go up and down in value. Uh, and then I have my uh, MIDI mod wheel connected to the <coughs> filter's time constant. And this is the output of the filter as we feed the square wave into it. I just want to look at what happens to the shape of the square wave. First it becomes more rounded, and it takes on sort of a shark fin shape. As we keep going, it becomes a triangle wave. This is one of the ways that, that a, a filter is used uh, to turn square waves into triangle waves. So that's a, a cool thing. You can morph between those. There's some interesting places in between. The shark fin, I think, is pretty cool. As you keep going, it just becomes a, a flat line, essentially, as the filter time constant is greater than, so much greater than the, the CV change of the square wave that, you know, there's really very little deviation. So the other type of um, filter circuit you can set up is if you take the output of the the CV filter, put it into an inverter, and then subtract it from the output of the LFO that you feed into the CV filter, and you can sum them at a value module. <laughs> and again, I've forgotten the exact name of this, but you can read about it in Tips and Tricks. So again, as we increase, right now we've got a straight line. And as we increase the time, we start getting these, uh, they look like rose thorns to me almost. Um, Eventide uses these in some of their modulation options. They call it uh, a peak, I think. But what it really is is a square wave that's, that's being filtered. As you keep going, you get some even more bizarre shapes. And when the <coughs> time constant reaches 60, you know, reaches its maximum 60 seconds here, we're back at pretty much a square wave. There's a little bit of a tilt in everything. But I just thought I'd show those off. You can put in other signals too. Let's just real quickly look at I don't know. Let's try a ramp wave. See what happens. I don't actually remember. We're discovering this together. So this is the output of the filter. As we increase the time, it takes on sort of a curved look. You notice it, it gets compressed more and more towards zero the higher the, the time is. So it has a, a narrower range. As you get up there, it becomes a line again. Before that, it's almost a triangle. That's just regular ramp wave stuff. If we look at the output of our <coughs> uh, other CV filter, get weird hump shapes and as we go to 60 seconds again we get a ramp wave so I don't know how useful these are they're they're interesting it's difficult to get them to scale because the the rate change of an LFO is different from the, the rate change of the CV filter so finding a way to pair them so that as you affected the rate of one, the other one would be affected in the same way to maintain the same shape at a, 
a faster speed is hard to do. Um, but I thought I'd show that off because I think they're they're cool. Uh, it's it's an option out there, particularly if you um, want to keep a constant modulation level, but have some different options for or, uh, a constant modulation rate, but have some different options for the shape of that modulation. So.